Yes. Dr. Abu Bakr? Yes, please. Yes. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, my slide is clear. Yes, please. And my voice. Yes, is it's clear. A clear. Professor Everything. Abu Bakr, yes, it's clear. Yes, thanks a lot, to the Morocco Society for Endometriosis, uh, for this kind invitation. And I want to uh, extend my regards from Egypt. Uh, we will discuss adolescent endometrioma and we will address five items. Definition of the incidence, demonstrate pathogenesis, describe the histopathology, identify diagnosis, and summarize treatment. Uh, first, I have nothing to disclose. And this is the reference of my talk. And the incidence of ovarian endometrioma, 17 to 44% in patients with endometriosis. Ovarian endometrioma accounts for 35% of all benign ovarian tests. What's about the pathogenesis? The adolescent endometrioma may have different origin from that seen in the adult. And we have theories explaining the development of endometrioma, the inversion and subsequent progressive invagination of the ovarian cortex, the metaplasia of invaginated ovarian serum proboscidium, and the ovarian follicular fluid may potentially induce endometrial cell growth. But in adolescent or the early onset endometriosis may be another theory explaining the neonatal uterine bleeding which occur in 5% of female neonates as an endometrial response to progesterone. It is an effect of progesterone withdrawal. And as we know, fetal distress may be caused by preeclampsia, fetal growth restriction, post maturity, RH isoimmunization, and all of these will lead to neonatal uterine bleeding. And the sealing of the endometrial progenitor cells into the pelvic cavity, which becomes activated around the time of celarchy. Uh, what is... No move? Why? And now it's moving now. Thank you. So uh, this, uh, again, this dislocated cells uh, remain dormant for years and activated in presence of factors, leading to highly angiogenic implant, leading to recurrent ectopic bleeding and leading to endometrioma. This theory explains why endometriosis and endometriomas can occur in girls before their first menstruation. And also this theory explains that adolescents may suffer from advanced endometriosis. The early onset endometriosis can become hidden, debilitating, and progressive, leading to impairment of the future reproductive life. Uh, let us ask ourselves: Is you can you can stop sharing the presentation and uh, trying again uh, to start to uh, uh, to. Uh, a new share? Or yes, what? to new yeah, share. Yeah, yeah, yes, because we, we, we are still blocked in the slides of non-disclosure. Oh, my God. Yeah, can you, can you try to share again your slides? New slides, yes, I will new share. Yes, please.
you know? Yeah, but go back to the beginning, please. Okay. Go back to the beginning. Yeah. To the yes. beginning, yes. Never mind. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, I will address five items uh, after the incidents, what is the pathogenesis, and we have theories explaining the development of endometrioma, and these theories are inversion and subsequent progressive invagination of the ovarian uh, cortex, metaplasia of the invaginated ovarian seromic epithelium, and the last theory, the ovarian follicular fluid may potentially induce endometrial cell growth. Uh, the, but in the adolescent or the early onset endometriosis, we have the neonatal uh, uterine bleeding, which occurs in 5% of the female neonates as endometrial response to progesterone. It is an effect of the progesterone withdrawal. And as we know, fetal distress uh, may be caused by preeclampsia, fetal growth restriction, post-maturity, RHI immunization, leading to neonatal uterine bleeding. And this seeding of the endometrial, uh, endometrial progenitor cells into the pelvic cavity, which become activated around the time of celarchy. The, these this, uh, located cells remain dormant for years and activated in the presence of factors, leading to highly angiogenic implants, recurrent ectopic bleeding, and endometrioma. Uh, this theory explains why endometriosis and the endometrioma can occur in girls before their first menstruation, and also explain adolescent may suffer from advanced endometriosis. The early onset endometriosis can become hidden, debilitating, and progressive, leading to impairment of the future reproductive life. Uh, let us ask this question. Is ovarian endometriosis is progressive or not? The answer of this question uh, was answered by Ding uh, recently in 2020. And he found that ovarian endometriosis of adolescent and adult are markedly different, with the adult exhibiting more extensive progression and fibrosis. And this suggests that the lesions in adults progressed to a more advanced stage. And the ovarian endometriosis is a progressive disease since the adult have had a longer time to progress. May one ask, what is about the speed of progression? What are the factors uh, on which the speed of progression depend? This depends on the lesional age and the presence of this menorrhea. The Third item, is, sorry, it is not moving also? Sir, would you please uh, answer me? No, you? You, you, okay, okay, we are getting the slide of histopathology. Thank you very much, shukran. Uh, uh, is endometrioma is a cyst or pseudocyst? In most cases, it is pseudocyst. The partial or complete endometrial light lining. It's very important to know that the endometrial tissue covers only 10 to 98% of the entire world. The median value of this coverage about 60%. And we should know what is the maximal penetration. The maximal, maximal penetration of the endometrial tissue is only 2 millimeters. And in most cases, it is less than 1.5 millimeter. This is very important in our clinical practice during electrosurgical intervention. And we should keep in mind that there is an inflammatory environment. And this inflammatory environment will lead to dense adhesion between the pseudocyst 
and the adjacent uh, uh, ovarian cortex, and this will be reflected in the plane of cleavage is difficult to be detected. Uh, also, there is an extra ovarian adhesion, and this uh, found in about 98% of cases. It may be deep in 70% or superficial in 30%. How to diagnose the endometriosis? Depending on hematoxin and eosin, uh, we should have two of three, two of three criteria, glands, stroma, hemocidrin, laden macrophage. If we have two of these three criteria, it is endometriosis. Uh, what are the histological types of endometrioma? Uh, according to Prozen, classified into four types, cortical invagination cyst, surface inclusion cyst, physiological cyst, related endometrial endometriotic cyst, and unclassified type. But Lee described two types of histologically distinct endometrioma, type 1 and the type 2. Type 1 arises from implants of endometrial tissue on the ovaries, leading to invagination and the bleeding into the ovarian stroma. The size of the type 1 often is less than 5 cm, with dense adhesion and associated fibrosis. And what is the clinical implication of this? The excision is, if excision is required, it will be difficult. And it will be, while type two arise from invasion of the endometrial tissue into a previously existing functional or a luteal cyst. Usually type two is larger with clearer plane of uh, cleavage and that's why the removal of type 2 is easy. As, what is about the site of endometrioma? In about 67%, it is present on the left side. And this can be explained by the decreased fluid movement on the left side because the presence of the sigmoid colon and the compression syndrome of the left renal vein leading to incompetent and dilated left uh, ovarian vein, venous congestion, hypoxia, and the increased concentration of sex hormones and cytokines. And please, uh, this uh, finding has a clinical application. If you are confronted with a right-sided endometrioma or bilateral disease, please expect to have more extensive disease expect to have a higher incidence of obliterated, obliterated uh, recto uterine pouch. Uh, what is about the difference between a healthy ovary and ovary including or containing an endometrioma? In the ovaries with endometrioma, there is a lower number of the anteral follicle and there is a lower follicular density of this cortex and there is increased follicular atresia there is increased activation of the early follicular development and this will be reflected clinically on the reduction in the response to the gonadotropin stimulation uh, thanks to Benjiano and go very recently uh, compared the ovarian endometrioma in different ages. It is different in the early adolescence, in adolescence, in adulthood, and in bosomonobos. Uh, we will uh, uh, compare only the adolescent endometrioma and the adulthood endometrioma. As you mentioned, the uh, uh, possible source is different. Uh, for the size, the adolescent endometrioma, the mean uh, size 75 uh, millimeter, while for the adulthood is larger, it may can reach the size of grapefruit. The cyst wall of adolescent endometrioma is thin and composed of ovarian cortex itself. While in adulthood, there is a progressive 
smooth muscle metaplasia leading to fibrosis. The uh, morphology of the, uh, adult, uh, of the adolescent uh, endometrioma is cystic, while in the adulthood, it may be cystic and it may be fibrotic. In the adolescent endometrioma, uh, uh, there is uh, the pattern of pain may be absent or it may be cyclic, while in adult endometrioma, usually cyclic, and there is reduced vascularity concomitant with increased fibrosis. The extent of fibrosis in adolescent endometrioma largely absent, while in adult endometrioma, increasingly uh, fibrotic. Uh, this is a very nice picture comparing between adolescent and adult. And as we look here, for adolescent, the wall of the endometriotic cyst has the same marble white or yellowish appearance. And it is lined by a thin, highly vascularized mucosa. While in the adult, the lining is darker, fibrotic, and devascularized. Uh, the fourth point to be discussed, how to diagnose. Uh, thanks to this author, he summarized the studies uh, for diagnosis and management of adolescent um, endometrioma. And we can uh, conclude that. The time, is it OK? The time from the onset of Menarche to the time of endometrioma, <laughs> which requires surgical intervention, at least four years. So this is, there is a delay in diagnosis of the endometrioma. Uh, we will, I will depend on the management of endo, uh, uh, adolescent endometriosis on the last issue guidelines, the recent one. And I have the honor to be one of the international reviewer of this guideline. Uh, just to have the grading uh, of the, it is an evidence-based, and this is the grading of the evidence. And strong and about the diagnosis, uh, please, we should carefully take the history and to identify the possible risk factors for endometriosis, the boosted family history, the obstructive genital malformation, early menarche, and the menstrual cycle. <laughs> 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 if there is 